All right, we are continuing with assignment one with our fantasy landscape that we are compositing from at least five different high quality sources. We talked about trying to get three layers of depth, right, when we introduced the project. So we post our sketch. This is my sketch. I've posted it. It's required. It's a personal vision of what you want from your fantasy landscape, but it can be inspired by things. Mine is inspired by this children's book. The Professor Wormbog children's book. And so there's certain elements. There's like funky trees and bushes and vegetation and weird lopsided hills. And this is going to get me started. Not because I'm necessarily going to find all of these exact things to composite with, but because I know what to look for. So what do I do? Looking in the assignment, I want to find high quality resolution reference images. I can use large images in Google Images, but that's not going to be nearly as good as this site. This is for raster searching. This is Pixabay. I'm going to turn off my account for a second. I'm going to log out of my Pixabay account so, so it looks like what it looks like when you just start Pixabay. You can always just type in Pixabay or you can use the link in the assignment. It's also in our course outline. So it looks like this. You do not need to join or log in to use it, but in order to get the highest resolution downloads, you do need to join. And all it takes to join, it's like setting up any free account, is an email address. What I'm going to do is start searching. What do I want for this? I want a really funky tree. And I can try typing in funky tree and then hitting return. Now, there are over 249,000 free images of funky trees. Not only are these free images, but these are actually royalty free images. They are basically a Creative Commons open license. But because I'm not logged in and, and because Pixabay makes money <laughs> being a free resource, I have to skip this first row. This first row is what are called stock images. Those of you in marketing know what this is. These are generic images that you can buy for use, right? What Pixabay is trying to be is a free source of images you can use for any purpose without royalty or copyright restrictions, but these images are donated by their creators. So you scroll past the stock photos, otherwise you're gonna get lots of things with watermarks or lots of things you have to pay for to be high enough quality. Scroll past that first row, all those 24, or 240,000 images are all here in lots and lots of pages, right? So there's 2,494 pages of this content. So clearly I need to, to narrow this down. So instead of funky tree, I'm also going to add bark, any tags I can think of, bulbous, and then let's see what I get. This is looking a little bit better. But I only want photos. So instead of all images, I just want photographs. I'm not going to limit it for color or for size. Oh, that's a beautiful funky tree. So when I see one I like, I'm going to right click just like we do with a Google image search. And I'm going to say open link in new tab. This is different than open the image in a new tab. Because this is just a thumbnail. On this site, I want to actually open the link. And then it goes takes me to that page for that image resource. Just like if it was on a stock page. Ignore the ads. These are all sponsored. These do not work. All the ones from the Pixabay search are your royalty free ones. And when I want to download it, I click download. And if I try to pick the largest quality, which is almost 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, huge, big enough for a wall mural. Uh, and I hit download, it's going to make me create an account. But if I don't want to, and I'm not going to, I'm going to say download and click on the second to highest. You'll still see that's well above a thousand dimensions in both directions. I can download that without having to log in. It will do a little pop-up where you can donate to the person that donated it. You can read more about the license, which we'll talk about more when we talk about copyright, but it's Pixabay's version of a Creative Commons open license. Very few restrictions on it. 
perfect for this assignment. Where did it download to? It downloaded to my downloads folder. It's right there. Just leave it there for now. Then I can close it and I'm back to my search. I'm looking for other cool bulbous trees. And a lot of this is showing the bark, right? But I want more of the whole tree. Why? Because I have this sketch which shows me that. Why am I looking for a second one if I already found one good one? Well, I don't want to be limited to just one, one example. Let's see. There are just a ton of nature photographs. So there's that one cool olive tree. Ah, but look at these roots. That's, that's perfect. It's a different species of tree, right? So I open that in a new tab, and I'm going to open, going to download the second to the biggest if I don't want to have to log in. I do have an account, and if you create an account, I just use my Gmail address, and then you donate 10 or more images, and they get accepted, which I do. I always donate whatever I create for, as a demo for this project. Um, then you get to explore the site without seeing any ads at all, which is always nice. Okay. You never have to donate. I think I've made 40 cents, you know, in 15 years <laughs> through people donating. So what you can donate one image, you can donate two images. Once you donate 10 or more, then your ads disappear. Yeah. It's a good resource. And there are other, Creative Commons open sites like this, but Pixabay is, is one of the biggest, so it's, it's useful. There are even vectors on here, and they make a distinction between AI-generated art and non. And they don't judge, you can upload it all, but whenever you are looking at something, you'll know if it's AI-generated or not. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't use it, right? Because that's different than prompting making our own AI generated stuff, which you can't get a high enough resolution without paying for anyway. So if you find something you like that's AI generated and it's good pixel quality, it, just treat it like another resource that you're finding online for this project. That's not breaking our AI policy. Yeah. Uh, so if it got misplaced, what you do is, do you have any folder in your doc at all? Do you have documents? So go ahead and open your documents in your finder. You'll see your downloads in this sidebar. Then to put it back in your doc. And I can help you with that. But you can always find it in this finder window. And then you can always move it from there to, to go into your, your doc. Does that make sense? Here, I'll pause and help you. Let's take advantage of the Pixabay. All right, next. I've got now two trees. I'm going to work really hard to make this pretty efficient. So usually, I would find like five or so different tree things. I would make my one tree out of lots of different ones. But I've got two. I'm going to move on because I need five or more. What other things do I need for my sketch? This is my sketch. I need a hillside. I need foreground bushes. I need oddly shaped rocks. <laughs> oddly shaped rocks. I think Pixabay also in its return results will deprioritize AI generated stuff in its listings. It's there. It's high quality. But usually people don't want that kind of stuff. Look at that blue nature crystal. So terms like funky, oddly, they can help to narrow them down, even though there's still 80,000 results. And you don't need to scroll through pages and pages. You're never going to find anything perfect. You're going to find things that are useful. Sometimes on Pixabay, you'll find things like this. The rock large landscape. Notice how it has a, a grid behind it. That is because it's actually a PNG asset which has already been cut out for you. So that's helpful, right? 
And remember, unless you join in, you, you can choose the second to the largest size. Do not choose a smaller size. And then this is kind of what I was thinking of, these kind of background rocks. Actually, these are even, uh, are they better? Yeah, I'll use these. I can change the color, I can change the lighting. Someone did a lot of nice compositing help by putting these, these like islands and these rock elements. Remember to open the link in the new tab. And then once you've downloaded it, you can close those tabs. Now, because I'm going to be showing it in PhotoP, I'm also going to try to be very efficient in my use of processing and memory because I don't want the, the program to, to glitch and have to work harder than it needs to. And we're still trying to make something that's print quality. So it needs to be at least 8 by 10 by at least 300 pixels per inch. But I don't need to go through all 800 pages. But I like these crystals. And sometimes you'll find elements that a lot of students end up using. And if they don't transform them enough, they become recognizable. But remember to scroll past the add bar. There's one at the top, there's one at the very bottom. Why is this giving me trouble? There we go. This is the free stuff. This is not stuff to use. They try to sell Canva to you. They try to do all kinds of things to make money. You just want these beautifully donated images. When you donate an image, you don't get any money for it. You only get money if people want to donate to you, but you've already released all of your rights to the image. So that's just a courtesy. So people can use these images for whatever they want. And they don't need to give any attribution to you whatsoever. That's because this is Creative Commons open. And we'll learn those distinctions. All right, what else? I got a few oddly shaped rocks. Now I need kind of a hillside, rocky cliff, funky. Remember, skip this row. Though it is annoying because sometimes the stock footage has exactly what you were thinking and shows it to you right away. But we have to do the, the work of being a cheap art student. I was just there this summer. Yeah. In Yosemite. Oh. <laughs> and Yosemite has some funky, funky shaped hillsides. So maybe I want to use something like that. Or I could use my own photographs, right? This is Yosemite as well. Yosemite is great. Yeah, I hadn't been since I was a middle schooler. And again, I'm trying not to get too many, but I could just keep going. There are pages and pages, right? It's a nice one. Second to lar largest. I don't want to make a, an account. Second to largest. Make sure they're well lit. Make sure the photos aren't blurry. It's time for our foot massage. It's from the construction site next door. Yep. So if, if the search results give me an idea, like Yosemite uh, Half Dome, then I can search that. And now I only have 765 images that might be a little bit more on point to what I'm thinking of. I know exactly where that photo was taken. That's cool. And remember, sorry, you don't want to open the image in the new tab. You want to open the link because it's actually going to take you to the same place because you have to download it from the image page, not from the search page. That's probably because someone's logged in. Yeah, so someone's logged in as person one. And you know what? It doesn't hurt them to have you download full size. 